In the last few videos, I introduced the basic hardware primitives that are required to implement uh, various synchronization operations, and I introduced the atomic exchange operation, and uh, then to reduce coherence traffic, I also introduced the test followed by the test and set. Okay, and so you know this means that for the most part, you're just reading a local value which does not provide or, or that does not lead to coherence traffic. And then when a lock is released, everyone tries to do a test and set, right? So there's a lot of coherence activity during the handoff of a lock, but otherwise there's low coherence traffic. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce one more primitive, which is called the load link store conditional, which further reduces this coherence traffic. Okay, and you'll soon see that it is also easier to implement in hardware and also provides more flexibility for the programmer. Okay, so what exactly is a load link store conditional? So, you know, we've seen before that, you know, what these synchronization operations are trying to do is essentially an atomic read modify write. Okay, so you atomically want to make sure that you read a value, do some computations on it, and then write a new result back into that location without anyone else intervening or modifying those values. Okay, so, you know, the atomic exchange was one version of that which allowed you to exchange a value in a register and in a memory location. Uh, and that operation was being performed atomically without anyone else messing with either the register or that memory location. Okay, so now, you know, as I said, I'm going to do a read modify write, but I'm going to separate those and not enforce that they all be atomic. Okay, so I'm going to do a load and I'm going to do a store later, and in between I can do, you know, various computations with that loaded value. Okay, but you know, these are completely independent operations, and I'm not going to enforce that they all happen together without anyone else intervening. But what I'm going to provide is a notification at the very end about whether this operation happened atomically or not. Okay, so again, let me go through this in some more detail. So I first do a load linked, and you know, there's a value from memory location X that I'm bringing into some register, let's say R1. Okay, then I do you know various operations, you know, using R1 to do uh, some computations, and then you know finally when I get to the very end I'm going to do a special store instruction which is a store conditional okay so you know let's say from R1 I'm going to write back into the memory location X okay so when this load link happen I'm going to maintain a special table that keeps track of the address X okay saying that I've just used a load linked instruction to bring in address X okay so if anyone else is going to modify X I want to be notified Okay, and this is going to happen because you've brought a copy of X into your cache, which means it's at least in shared state, which means if somebody else tries to do a write into X, they do have to notify you, right? So whether it's a snooping-based protocol or a directory-based protocol, you will be notified if someone else tries to do a write to X. Okay, so if someone else tries to do a write to X and you get notified, you're going to set a bit over here that says, oh, you know, since I loaded the value of X, X has now changed. Okay? This is very similar to the ALAT table that I introduced in you know, a long back when we were discussing compiler based optimizations, right? So there when I hoisted a load, I was again keeping I was again having a table like this to keep track of whether that value has changed, you know, since um, since it got hoisted and executed early. Okay, so similarly, I have, you know, when I, when I bring in x, I'm going to track it in a table to see if anyone else is modifying x. So when I get to the store instruction, I'm going to look up this table over here and I'm going to see if X has changed or not since the load linked. If it hasn't changed, then if I now go ahead and perform the store, it's almost as if the you know this entire sequence of instructions happened as one atomic unit, okay? Because uh, the value of X has not changed, so you know you can just assume that all of these instructions happened as one large instruction, okay? So uh, even though the instructions, even, even though the in, the individual instructions were not atomic the net result is as if all of these instructions are ex executed as one atomic packet. Okay? If the value of X has changed, then it means that, you know, clearly somebody else has intervened between my read and my write. Okay, so now these instructions are no longer atomic. So if that's, this bit is set in this table, the store conditional just fails. Instead of writing into X, it puts a flag into R1 saying that this store conditional has failed. Okay, so the very next thing I do is I check, you know, if R1, whatever, if it has failed, then I loop back up over here and I try to attempt to do this read modify write yet again. And hopefully at some point I will be able to do the entire thing atomically and then I will succeed and then I will move on past this point. Okay, so this is why this is called a store conditional because it's not always a store. It's a store conditional on the fact 
that X has not changed in the recent past or you know since it was last uh, loaded with a load linked instruction okay so let's go through another example you know let's look at how I'll build a lock with a load linked store conditional okay so this is my lock routine you know previously I was doing a test followed by a test and set now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load the value of the lock okay and if I see that it is it is one that is if the lock is occupied then I'm just going to loop back up and, and again repeat my load linked okay so until the lock is freed I'm just going to be in this tight loop just reading the value of the lock okay so this is really not going to cause uh, any coherence traffic because everyone is just reading their shared copies of the lock finally when the lock is released right so when the lock is released uh, the releaser will write a zero into that location uh, everyone will see that their copies are invalidated then they will fetch the new copy and they will all when, when they do the load linked after that they will all see that um, the value of the lock is zero it is unoccupied which means it should be fair game for me to try and occupy the lock okay so you quickly put a one into register r2 that's what this instruction is doing so you exit this branch you quickly put a one into r2 and then I try to write the one into that memory location okay so the memory location is in uh, has address sitting in R1 okay so I'm trying to write a one into this immediately and this is being done with a store conditional instruction okay so the first instruction that does the store is going to succeed okay because since it did its load linked no one else has written into this location so that store is going to succeed and you know you check the condition of R2 over here you realize that yes my store has succeeded so I go ahead and I execute my critical section okay but every other thread is going to see this first store conditional right they're going to see that somebody else has slipped in ahead of them and done the right okay so their tables get this invalidation message and they realize that since I have done the load length the value in uh, in X has changed okay so all of the other threads that are trying to get the lock their store conditional is going to fail okay and they realize that when they check the the flag in R2 and they go back up and, and 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 try to do the lock all over again okay so this is how load link store conditional works and you'll see that this actually leads to less coherence traffic okay because you know let's let's walk through all the steps so finally when the thread releasing the lock does the write there's one write transaction on the bus and everyone has their cache copies invalidated if there are i threads waiting for the lock all of them are going to you know now do a load linked on an invalid cache block okay so they flag a cache miss and they all issue a read miss request and they get the response back okay it's also possible to optimize this okay so you know if everybody is requesting the same cache block once the response shows up if every if, if everyone realizes that this is a response for the same block uh, that we are next going to make a request for they are actually they can actually accept this block and they can cancel their their pending request okay so it's possible to optimize these i responses into a single response and everyone picks up the block when they realize that we are all waiting for this block you know someone else has made the request and here's the block let's all read it right now okay so everyone gets a copy of the block then finally the first thread to successfully perform the store conditional does the write so that leads to another coherence transaction that invalidates everybody else's cache copy yet again so when they try to do the store conditional they actually look at their table and they realize that you know the store is destined to fail so let's not even bother doing a coherence transaction so now you have zero coherence transactions for these other failed threads and this is where this differs from the previous test and test and set example there you know everyone is going to try and do a test and set and a test and set always leads to coherence traffic because you're trying to do a write so this is where you end up saving that um, you end up saving messages relative to the test and test and set code I showed you before okay so then after that you know all these other threads loop back up over here and they try to do a load linked that again leads to I minus one you know read miss requests and then you get I minus one responses again this could be optimized to be a single response because everyone is just just trying to get a read only copy of the same cache block okay so this kind of shows you how the load link store conditional leads to less coherence traffic it is also easier to implement in hardware because you know previously we had to make sure that an atomic exchange was happening atomically here you don't have to work as hard to implement atomicity because you know the load length and the store conditional are completely independent so the read and the write are completely independent instructions all we have to do is make sure that you know when the store conditional is ready to happen the check of the table and the outcome of the store conditional all of that does have to happen atomically okay so in hardware this implementation is a little bit easier 
it also gives the programmer a lot more flexibility, right? So before, with the test and set, you were restricted to, you know, writing a one into a memory location and then at the same time reading that result back. Here there's a lot more flexibility because you're doing a read, you're doing a write much later, and in between you can do all kinds of fancy computations. And the underlying hardware will tell you if that entire block of code was being executed atomically or not. So it gives the programmer a lot more flexibility, easier to implement in hardware, also higher performance. Okay, so this is clearly the state of the art in terms of implementing these, these synchronization primitives in hardware.